What's up, guys? Johnny here. Welcome back. Uh, this week, I just got back from the Buffalo Bando Race out in Buffalo, New York. It was held at a place called Riverworks. It's just a really, really cool venue. Uh, a big bar inside on the river in Buffalo, New York. Um, you might have seen videos online. Just a really, really cool main race course going through these abandoned kind of structures, flying 60 feet up in the air, going through dive gates after doing power loops. Really, really cool event. Um, you can see here some GoPro footage of me just capturing what the main race course looked like. This was a whole lot of fun, really unlike any other race course that I've done. Uh, really super happy to be part of that event. It was just really, really awesome. Anyways, there was actually a separate part here. This is not the part where we qualified. When we were qualifying, we were actually qualifying indoors on a much more tight te technical track. You can see that footage here uh, with that GoPro. And inside this environment, it actually wound up being the perfect opportunity to test out multi-path handling for the rapid fire. So within this setup, we actually had a, what I'll call a Scully Vision setup. Uh, Joe Scully set up ground station video for all of us to use. And the way it works is basically, he has two different receiver units, each with quad diversity. One set up inside of one rink and one set up inside of the other rink. That video then gets combined to whatever the strongest signal has, and that's what I'm calling Scully Vision. When I first started, you can see the video here. This was on the ground station. Just awful, horrendous, just unbearable, bad video. Um, you see a little desync there because I had to replace my ESC and didn't change the settings, but um, just really, really tough flying environment. You see lots of flicking going to black and white and back. I didn't really notice a scrolling issue in my viewport while I was flying, but you can see it flickering here. Just lots of multi-pathing, lots of interference, lots of problems there. Um, it actually got the best of me there. That dive gate was really, really tough for qualifying, especially starting out. And this is, I think, maybe my first or second time on this track. Uh, it was just really, really tough. So what I decided to do next is I actually switched over to my rapid fire module uh, to say, you know, rapid fire is meant to improve multipathing, kind of help you out. And the way I was running this, I was actually running two omnidirectional antennas. Because we were basically flying all around ourselves, I didn't need a patch pointing in any one particular direction. I just wanted to test out how does the multipath handle with the rapid fire as compared to how I was flying with that ground station. All right, so here you can see the lock in the top corner. I put that on my, uh, my module primarily so I could tell what is what when I came back. You can see the image looked better at first, but it does start flickering almost right away before I even take off. Um, once I get going, the multipathing is actually not quite as bad in this particular hockey rink, the one with the green ground. Um, it seemed to be a lot worse than the red, but it's still ever present along this track. When I was flying with the ground station, there was really two spots that it really struggled with. Uh, one, <laughs> as you can see, I actually got lost in this course. Again, this is the second time I've flown it. I forgot which way to go. I had to get turned around. Um, but this is one section here where it got a little bit tough. Um, you see it's actually being handled pretty well by the, the rapid fire. As I go on the other section, you see it gets a lot worse, especially in that ground. Lots of multipathing, lots of interference, just really tough to fly. But you notice it's not going black and white. It's not going back to color as much as it was with that ground station. As I was flying this, I actually much preferred the handling of the multipathing with the rapid fire as compared to using the Joe Scully Scully Vision system. Um, so I was actually reasonably happy with this at that given time. It's certainly not perfect. It doesn't get rid of all of the different multipathing, but you know, watch this for yourself. It, it is somewhat kind of flyable. Um, I don't feel like this was preventing me from flying the course, and I do feel like it actually did a little bit better than the Scully Vision ground station. So I feel like it actually gave me a slight advantage over those who are only able to fly with either their Trudy or LaFord setup or using the Scully Vision uh, ground station systems. All right, lastly, I was able to get a clear view to use. This was a clear view from the RC Addict. Uh, this was one of my last uh, flights of the day, or the last flights I was able to do in qualifying here. And to me, this is a much clearer picture. One thing I do want to point out is this is actually running with a different quad than the other one. So this is actually using a Micro Swift 2 camera, while the other one is using a Micro Predator V2. Um, but to me, this is actually a big improvement. When I was flying with the clear view, it was a definite noticeable difference in handling of that multipathing as compared to the rapid fire. But there was still a lot of multipathing through this environment. The RF situation was so bad, there was really no magic bullet to fight it uh, like you kind of hoped for. But, you know, to me, this was just the best option I had was that clear view. And I was very thankful for having the chance to use it for one of my qualifying runs. But, of course, you know, watch this yourself. 
see what you think about it, see how it compares to that rapid fire. All right, so this clip right here is just me trying to use the same exact camera to give a comparison of what the rapid fire looks like when flying with the Micro Swift 2 camera. This particular footage here is actually when I was carrying a GoPro just so I could share GoPro footage of what the arena looked like to give you an idea of what it looks like without all the interference and multi-pathing going on. Um, but using the same camera as I was using for the clear view, I'm hoping that will provide kind of the most accurate representation for you to really compare what the two look like. So that's what this clip is right here. All right, then here you can see where I put them all back together, uh, comparing the three different ones, the Scully Vision, the Rapid Fire, and the Clear View. Um, the Rapid Fire and the Clear View picture that you're seeing here is both of the same camera. They're both uh, Swift 2s. Uh, the Scully Vision picture, I believe, actually all three of them are, are with the same exact camera, all using a Micro Swift 2. Um, just, again, watch this for a little bit, make your own conclusion. Um, I think it's pretty clear that the Clear View was the best picture, but you might find that it might have been something else. Um, also keep in mind that things do look worse via the DVR than they do in the goggles. It's just always the case that you're going to see with these recordings. Um, but this still gives a relative idea of about what you're seeing with each of these. All right, so this clip here is at now at the end of the day. Um, I'm basically flying with the Predator V2 camera again using that rapid fire. And this flight was just me trying to show that I could fly this course when the pressure was off. I wasn't really happy with the way I performed at this race during qualifying. I felt like I could have flown much better. And I just think I get in my own head and I lack the confidence I needed to fly the course. So just for my own benefit, I decided to go back, fly it again after all the racing was done. And just try to put up decent times in this course, and that's what I'm showing here. So this again, Predator V2 with that rapid fire. Um, <laughs> I had a little bit of mess up there, trying to push it hard, but but really just I feel like this is showing that with the rapid fire, even in a super tough environment like this, it's not holding me back uh, for me able to fly the way I want to on a course like this. And that is really what I wanted to show. Is even though vi the video is bad, it's not so bad that I can't be successful on it, and it was really proving that to myself here. So. To show up the rest of this clip. It's like, man, man, if only I would have flown like this during qualifying, I would have qualified a heck of a lot better. So the time here was actually really, really good. It would have been really good in qualifying, but regardless, I qualified just fine. Just mental note for next time, know that I can do this, believe in myself, have confidence. All right, so anyway, hopefully that kind of gave you enough idea of what the environment was like, what a tough multi-pathing environment is like for racing, and how the rapid fire deals with it, especially compared to something like a ground station like the Scully Vision, which is actually really, really, really good, um, as well as comparing it to a Clearview, which is kind of the holy grail of racing. So hopefully you found that helpful. Um, just wanted to share that with you. Uh, let me know down below if you enjoyed this, if this video helped you out. Give me that thumbs up if you liked it. If not, let me know what was wrong with the video. And as always, I'll catch y'all guys next time. Peace.